Welcome, this is Jeremiah. We're going to get started on number 33 on the annual matrix. This is New Covenant. This is Jeremiah. And we are going to get right into Matthew. Uh, we're going to listen to Matthew 1, 2, and 3. And we're going to, then I'll show up, and then we will get into uh, a review of chapters 1, 2, and 3. As the annual matrix is now underway. So... I have the, the image here of my science lesson, one of the main images of the science lesson that I have available here. Uh, that is under 15 on the playlist. You'll have to search for that at this time. We do not have a table of contents up yet for the playlist. We will have it up shortly, hopefully. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We're going to listen to Matthew 1, 2, and 3. Now, you're looking at a diagram or an illustration of what actually heaven and earth are. In the center, you'll see uh, a, a microcosm or a small, uh, what, what we might call a, a uh, I don't have my pointer here. You know, science and rapture and all these lessons are all tied together. We, we're going to bounce around, and I enjoy doing that, but right here we have, this is a microcosm of of earth and the dome over the earth and the stars are in the dome and here you, here you see the sun and moon circling this is a tent this is called a firmament and the earth is here and sun and moon circle around like hands in a dial here and here's a nice microcosm that I got and I, I need to uh, well we won't go into that but anyway so this of course is the foundation the pillars up here we have the glassy sea the, the earth was founded upon pillars, and it will never be moved. This never moves. The earth is never moved. Up here, the Bible says that the, that, that the heaven never moves, that the pillars are in water here. There's pillars here, and God holds the pillars where they are, and it's under the influence, the Bible says, of nothing. No influence of anything. This is your Bible. This is real science. Now, you, you can look at this as we uh, and start thinking about this whole dome of stars or firmament, and it's made of hard glass, which says right here uh, in Job, it's made of hard glass, like a, like a lens that you look through, okay? And uh, actually, this is a picture of a real star. I don't, you, you can't see that on there. Uh, that's out of your view. I, I, I wanted to mention that on my science lesson. I think I did. But we have a lot of science here left to, to review some other time, not right now. But this is basically... Uh, the, 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 the pillars up here, and God put it on a glassy sea. The heaven is on waters. The throne is here is on water. He, and it has pillars. And this has pillars. In the beginning, God created this, this plateau and this mesa here. There is nothing else for any, anywhere else for anyone to live or to exist. These stars here are here, they're in the dome, midway between heaven and earth, and I'm not going to go into that today, I just want to, you can take a look at this and, and get, get your mind getting into real science, and of course my science lessons are here, let's get into Matthew, we're going to listen to Matthew 1, 2, and 3, okay, let's get going, then I'm going to give you some I, some uh, some thoughts on it, One Matthew 1, 2, and 3, okay, let's go. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And Judas begat Phares and Zara of Thamar. And Phares begat Ezram, and Ezram begat Aram. And Aram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Naasson, and Naasson begat Salmon. And Salmon begat Boaz of Rechab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias, and Solomon begat Roboam, and Roboam begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa, and Asa begat Josaphat, and Josaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias, and Ozias begat Joatham. And Joatham begat Ahaz, and Ahaz begat Ezekias, 
And Ezekias begat Manasses, and Manasses begat Ammon, and Ammon begat Josias, and Josias begat Jeconias, and his brethren, about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begat Abiud, and Abiud begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadoch. And Sadoch begat Achim, and Achim begat Eliud, and Eliud begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Mathan, and Mathan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are fourteen generations, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are fourteen generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are fourteen generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now we're going to go to two. Let's go to 2 here, Matthew chapter 2. Chapter 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah 
was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose, and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, He shall be called a Nazarene. Let's go to chapter 3. Could I get the 10-piece chicken McNuggets? Wait, no, Big Mac. Hmm. I wasn't expecting that. I have this on, on, uh, on my computer. I don't know. Chapter 3. Let's go. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees, Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John, to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Chapter 3 In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent. Okay, that's it for that. Uh, we might go to 4 to, to get a head start. Let's take a look. Matthew tells the good news. We lost our feed here. One moment. Yeah, we lost one moment here. Matthew chapter 4. We might do, go right into 4 here. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Chapter 4. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulun and Nephthalim, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephthalim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. Okay, that's it. Let's take a break. We're back, we're back. Now, let's, uh, one moment here. We get a little bit better here in view here. This is Jeremiah. Now, we just went through 1 through 4, Matthew 1 through 4. Now, for those of you who have a computer, you can get those online. I have those chapters in my computer on the drive, but I decided to go to the, to the uh, uh, it's quicker to go through the, easier to go online on YouTube and just, uh, as you heard the hamburger insertion there, they, every time there's high volume of any kind, they'll, they'll insert ad advertisements. My uh, videos here on uh, the uh, matrimonial marriage with 101 strings, very professional, beautiful organization, uh, a wonderful band, a group of musicians, of course. Uh, they're obviously... inserting some sort of uh, advertisements there. I haven't had much time to even check on it, but there's, there's, there's close to 100,000 views. So uh, 101 Strings is, uh, is here, and, and uh, it's the most popular thing here. And uh, once again, I don't have much time for it this time, but uh, I, I did have time years back. I, ha I have some of those albums from 101 Strings. But let's get back to Matthew here. And uh, we, we, we just heard one through four. What we'll do is we'll go through the first two chapters and we'll review probably three and four tomorrow. As we look, we, we, we get into this New Testament 
This is a King James Protestant situation here. This is the New Testament. It's red letter edition that we're reading from here. At least that's what I assume they have there online. I think that's what they do have. But we have the King James red letter. We really push these red letters. You don't have to have a King James red letter edition Bible. But if you can get one, get one. End of story. Okay? Now here we go. Here we go. Um, this is an exciting time in this ministry because we're spending a lot of time uh, focusing on how to look at subjects in your Bible. That's all we're doing here. And, that, and that's what I'm going to focus on in this ministry is for us to read and to and to understand what the subject matter is. What are the definitions of the words? What is the context? Contextualism. What are the words around the words? And why are there different meanings for the same word? This becomes a, a very big issue here. Now, I did have a category for that, and I've removed that temporarily for vocabulary and contextualism. Uh, I think we, 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 I decided to, well, let's go, we're not going to go that right now. So here we are, we have 52 up here. Subject, remember, of the main matrix was just a practice to show you how the new covenant is an agreement on the same grounds. That Those grounds are part and parcel of the, the sound doctrine of the, of the Bible we're reading, the red letters. And in these red letters, the primary uh, focus of all of these subjects is living bread. Living bread is what's required of you. It's, it's the center of everything. So, and, and, but there are other subjects in your Bible that may not necessarily be central to salvation, to you being saved. You going up instead of going down. Okay, that's what this is about. So uh, that's why we spend a lot of time on living bread here. However, living bread can get a little confusing because it's basically all living bread. Your, the entire Bible, because it's all the truth. Truth is very important. For example, science, what I just showed, showed you, heaven and earth, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. There was nothing else created, essentially. Especially in terms of having some sort of place to reside. That's why there are pillars. Pillars are for places for people and entities and beings to live on. And there's only two. As you can see in my illustration there, the diagram shows you that there's no other place to live. The only, other, only, the only other place to live is in fire below. That's it. And that was created after or for fallen angels. Then when Adam and Eve sinned, then, then hell was made larger because anybody who lives in lies, you go down. If you, if you think it's okay to disrespect God, your creator, then bottom line, in American terminology, you're going down. I'm giving you an Americanized perspective. <laughs> A little rustic, but uh, it gets the job done. That you want to pay attention here, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to learn how to pay attention here, and especially to sound doctrine and and, and and in the main matrix we had an agreement which is a covenant to learn of him and the core principles are living bread and you're wise to take in the living bread and the way you take it take in the living bread is this is, is to be confident in the whole process of living bread the process of repentance from John the Baptist and turning away from sin, confessing reality, 
and then you confess reality and the truth, which you don't really know. Before you, before you came to church and so forth, uh, you out there, all of us, we didn't know the truth because you didn't know Jesus. So therefore, it's time for you to put confidence in something new. That's what Christian faith is. It's, you're putting confidence in something that your grandparents lost confidence in, which is the fear of the Lord. They lost it. And we're here to regain it. It's an opportunity. That's what covenant means. You have an opportunity now to agree with reality. If you do, then you're a winner. If you say no, like when I was in college, or sec when I went to a secular college, the, uh, the college was secular uh, um, pretty much, and, and they, they disagreed with reality. I, I, I'm not a sinner. You know? And, and on, a, on a lesser note, but just as important, but very important, was they didn't believe that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And that, there, that, that, that there's no other place to live. You can turn your TV on and watch these movies on, 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 on Tubi and all these uh, everywhere. Even on Rumble now, they're, they're really heavy into outer space and stuff. It's all nonsense. That's the point. It's, it's more lies, isn't it? That's what it is. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, call it like a T.I. is. Call it like a tip. Anyway, let's get into Matthew. One. We're, we're, we're just going to go through one, one through two here. And I'll be right back as we give a review on what we just heard. And we're going to leave three and four alone. I'll probably have that ready here for tomorrow or something like that. Maybe Monday on, on my schedule, okay? And I don't even mention my schedule to you, but anyway, let's get going. As we get into a review, I'm going to shut down. Uh, then we'll come right back, and we're going to take a look at one and two. I gave you a, a sneak preview of two and three and four. Five is five. Five is is monstrous. It's it's very difficult to get through Matthew chapter five in any kind of short order. Uh, Almighty God, the Lord Jesus Christ, decides to unpack and unload on you. I mean, for your mind to get a grip on everything in Matthew chapter 5 alone, he gives you a lot to study. Those red letters there, right there in that chapter 5, Matthew 40.5 is ginormous. It's, it's just, and then you go to chapter 6 and it's the same thing. Chapter 7 is a little lighter. So is chapter 8. So a lot of these chapters are very light, but, but a lot of them are very heavy. They have multiple subjects, and they're not easy to go through uh, in, in brevity, and that's what I want to do. I want to go through the New Testament in a quick, short fashion. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to have to leave some things out. But we're, what we're going to do is, probably next year, I'll go back through this again. We're going to go back through book 40 through 66 again. And, th and this time, we'll try to hit some things that we, that we missed. Now, what are we going to miss? And I'll shut down here for a moment. We're not going to miss the heavy hitters, such as repentance, which we just heard and baptism of John. Make straight ye the ways of the Lord. Okay, we're, we're not going to skip heavy stuff like that. That's also basically the same thing as a Hebrew call to what? The Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is the first feast, which is now a part of the Passover, the, basically the same festival, which they call Holy Week now, uh, many people do, uh, the week before our lovable master was crucified. They, there are two things going on. One is get the house cleaned up and make yourself ready for your Passover. You're going to be passed over by the blood of the Lamb. 
You and your family, just like Moses and Aaron, his brother, and his mother, and his sister Miriam, and so forth, they're all going to be passed over because there's going to be blood on the door. They're not going to die. But everybody else in town who doesn't have blood on the door is going to die. So the Feast of Unleavened Bread is when you get all the pride out of the house so you can get ready to be covered. Same thing for repentance and baptism. When we come to the church to, re to repent and be baptized, we come there with an idea of get sent out and get it out quick. Okay, that's what it means. Repentance and baptism does not remove the removal of the, the, the conscious effort to get your act together. Sin life. A lot of Americanology, Americanism has, had, has inserted repentance and baptism as something that is divorced from getting yourself cleaned up uh, when you come to repentance and baptism. It, American, American Christianity is basically, uh, it's, it's basically wrong, a lot of it. Because they don't emphasize when you get when you repent and you're baptized, you really want to have your act together. You, you don't have to be perfect or anything, but you really want to focus on getting sent out. I'll get back to that a little later. Okay? Maranatha, we'll be right back. <laughs> 